Hello, welcome to Grandpa's workshop. I'm Loz and you're always welcome in the workshop. Sunday workshop waffle, 15th of January. My, it's halfway through January already. What have I got for you this Sunday? Well, it's a double one because I missed last Sunday. So let's work through what we've got. A bit on covers for the cast iron tabletops. My rust removal method. Moving, rearranging stuff about. A bit on dust extraction and the problems I'm having. An update on my clamp collection, which is growing like topsy at the moment. Dehumidifier is working. It's not got its final spot, but I'll give you an update on that. More on the plans for workshop organisation that I mentioned on Wednesday. A bit on finding time in the workshop. I know it's always difficult. I've got some views on that. And then lastly, because nobody ever watches the whole video, I've started putting a preview for what's on next in the workshop at the back end of the video. So play through. You don't have to watch it. Just let it run and I'll catch you at the end of the video. OK, with a preview of what's to come. Just before Christmas and I'll put an insert in. I had a hard freeze and the tops of the bandsaw and the table saw all went bright orange. So I had to repeat what I normally do and I've made some covers. That's the cover for the bandsaw and as warned it is start <laughs> to be used to hold stuff and there's an MDF cover on the table saw and again I'm using it the stand stuff on so that's actually worked if you ain't gonna take it off and show you 18 mil ply with a little white wood strip around the outside to guide it to the edge and then pushed in with the blade running just to provide the slot in there so I'll take it off and show you and there we are nice and shiny again although I need to go over it again uh, the actual the actual cover asked on the underside of the cover I did try to stick with some spray on adhesive a layer of old tea towel and then soak that in oil so it's got the tea towel soaked in oil in contact with the surface but so far the actual protection having an 18 mil layer of plywood on top of the cast iron seems to be doing the job I, I couldn't get the old tea towel to the stick because it was pretty filthy so I'm gonna get a fresh can of spray adhesive and a, a cheap uh, tea towel and cut it to size and I'll show you that when I do it and similarly on the MDF covering the table saw. Right, so a quick rundown as to the method I've been using off, off multiple YouTube sites. I rub down with an oily rag with white spirit to get any surface rust off. That's, that's a cheap clone of WD-40 spray it on so it puddles on the surface leave it for 20 minutes half an hour and then give it a good scrub with scotch bright i wanted the red scotch bright but that's all i could get uh, until most of it comes off i did lose patience so basically i put my sander on to take some of the elbow grease out of it and of course you notice I've ruined the sander so I've got to pick all that fluff off that before it'll actually stick sandpaper to it. Lesson learnt on that and then a wax polish that's the one one. I've got a tin of the Axminster machine polish somewhere but that's the idea and I'll show you the quick show you the result. And there we are nice and shiny again although I need to go over it again.
just marking the top on that side because it's sticking. My school saw blades. Got too much stuff, I'm going to have to have a sort out. So the idea is, is that most of the hanging stuff is using these. And I've got some little brass do you know, like library index card pulls. So it's a little pull with a little space for a label. So eventually everything will be nicely labelled. I don't like the stain, so I'm upping it to a red front door paint and match the accents to reds, which is good. I'm going to have to find somewhere else to do that because I've got my jigs to go on that wall that will allow me to open that. Well, I can open it, but it will allow me to work on the uh, sharpening wheels here. We'll see. Oh, the other thing. The other thing. Let me find something. Right, dust extraction. Did you know I've got the big Schlepak blue dust extractor with the 100ml dust extraction tube? When that came, it came with these hex head screw pipe clamps to go on either end. Problem is, I've got one dust extractor machine and I've got two big machines the band saw and the table saw take the 100 mil so I need some way of permanently fixing the tube to the extractor bin and then some form of way of swapping round and obviously that's no good so what I did I opened myself some Axminster Pipe clamps. The idea is that goes on the end and I can just switch the end from one machine to the other. There's a problem. I don't know if any of you guys know how to overcome it. Uh, they don't grip. So you squeeze it or open it up and then let go and that's supposed to hold it. But when that's gripping on the end of the 100mm pipe it doesn't pinch the pipe at all, so the pipe is loose on the tube as it comes out of the machine, so it's useless. And I only found that out after I bought two of these. 63mm dust extraction tube. Uh, have you noticed how all these tubes are all, all non-standard widths and then the machines where stuff comes out of the machines it never fits anything and then you get these plastic adapters and there's still in all the combinations there isn't one that fits firmly I can't find them I don't know where I've put them I think I've got six the idea is to have these with the adjustable clamps on so I can move them from machine to machine and the 63mm version of this doesn't grip this either. So if anybody if anybody out there knows how to overcome that, otherwise I'm going to have to permanently plumb them in. I did plan on having so look, this is from my previous workings. That's the inline dustbin. So 
can pull your vac attached to one of these. I think it's the top one. And then you've got a choice of two extras. So you, can, you put this between the machine and the vacuum. So all the dust comes through. Um, the venturi in here means the dust goes down into the bottom so you're not filling up your vac so much. It's a nice big bin. That's going underneath here and I might use my melee vacuum which is the pre-EU regulations that nerf the power on vax. So that will go under at a permanent tube I'm planning on having the row of three. So the drill, the mitre saw and the lathe and I'll have this going across down through the top of the bench onto here and I'll get a wide junction and a short length of this to be attached to each of these. That fits on my Hikoki pipe at the back but as I say a temporary arrangement with these alligator clips is not holding it other than me wrapping the ends of things with tape to the flatten it up which then makes it more difficult if you know what I mean to put it on and off I don't know but anyway that's the plan along there uh, I'm going to have to that's not glued up yet and screwed to the wall so I'm going to take that down his mantle it reassemble it with a better fit now I've got some clamps and then that'll go back on the wall and I'll paint these that's that the other thing and I'll show you the rack for my parallel clamps is now full I managed to snag the four black ones, if you can see them there. They're Bessie clamps. Yay, Bessie! I got them in the sale, half price. What do I think of Bessie? Nah, nah. Well, that's the 80mm depth one that matches the 80mm depth parallel clamps from Axminster. <sighs> A lot said about Bessie being the Rolls Royce of clamps. These particular ones are pretty much out of the same Chinese clone factory. I might do a quick review of them shortly. But now I've got that full, that's got to move over there to give me some space on that side for my uh, jigs to hang up on the, uh, the French cleat wall. Everything's got to be moved around. So that's that. The uh, dehumidifier is working, connected to a bucket, so I don't have to come out twice a day. I can undo it once a day, and I get something like three quarters of a bucket full in 24 hours. It's turned off at the moment, and the humidity level in the hour I've been in has gone up from about 45% to 54 So when I've stopped filming, I shall uh, put it back on again and, and get it down. That seems to be helping with rust in the garage. Now, that's obviously not a permanent spot. <laughs> I've got to drill a hole in the wall, either down that side or that side. That's where the goddies are of the roof gutters. I've got myself a 16 mil big masonry drill bit. Uh, but because the weather's so wet and naff and cold and windy, I'm not going to kneel down on the wet flags to try and drill holes through that. That's that's on my to-do list. Okie doke. Well, there we go. I think that's all for now. I think I'm getting... I think I'm getting to the stage where I know how the final look of the workshop is going to be. I know a couple of you <laughs> have looked around your workshops with the New Year's resolution in mind and decided it's all too much of a tip and it needs sorting. I have the same. My shed's full. 
and I'm spending 10 minutes at the start of every workshop session uh, just moving stuff off surfaces to get out stuff underneath and then moving them back. So, you know, in an hour's work, something like 45 minutes is taken up with moving stuff out of the way and then trying to remember where it's all gone. I'll do a video about planning your time. Mark from Small Shed Adventures does this health and well-being series on his channel. Always worth going and having a, a check. Uh, I'm finding getting in the workshop is good for my mental health and peace of mind. Uh, even if it just entails coming in, sitting down and having a look round. Cheers me up. With this awful weather and because Nana Sue and I are still effectively under lockdown because of fear of infections. I mean, she was hospitalised twice in 22 with serious infections. Uh, you can get a bit cabin crazy. So just being able to get out of the house and have a, a change of scenery is very good. And I'd recommend that. Even if it means <laughs> you have to spend 10 minutes clearing a space to put a stool down in order to stare at the mess. But as I say, I'll talk about project project management. The other thing I've found, those of you that haven't done any uh, time and motion, look up the Pomodoro method. Uh, Pomodoro is like a time management method. You get yourself a little countdown clock, set it for 50 minutes and just do something and then when the bell rings you, you give yourself 10 minutes break so I come out set my little clock for 50 minutes when the 50 minutes up I go in check on Nana Sue because if I because I find if I leave her more than an hour she finds she gets bored and finds something to get up the mischief with uh, <laughs> <laughs> find an ass over tip behind some furniture but so anyway give yourself 15 minutes it's a change of it's a change of view change of break I go in have a cup of tea and then usually she's found some jobs for me do them when she's happy I come out for another 50 minutes hour a bit like cheapest form of therapy if you go to a therapist all you get is a 50 minute hour so Buy yourself a five pound timer <laughs> and, and get out in your shed. That's my advice. Okay, I'm off for my cup of tea, guys. You crack on in your workshops and I'll see you next time. Right, a preview of what's on next. If you're observant, the stuff that's still in videoing that isn't in this week's episode. Uh, I'm working on the back, uh, creating a dust shroud for the mitosaur. You'll see bits of that. I'm creating shelf supports for the stuff I've got under the back bench, and you'll see a bit of that. And for a workshop project, I've decided to revisit my push sticks, and I've got a whole selection of stuff from to internet and other YouTube creators. Uh, I'm not happy with the plastic ones, but there'll be a whole video on it and we'll get into it. I'm cherry picking a number of the better YouTubers ideas. Everybody has an idea, a bit like creating a better mouse trap, so a better push stick. I'm gonna try half a dozen types and report on them in use. So that's coming up. There we go. You crack on in your workshops. I'm off for another cup of tea and I'll see you next time, guys. You stay safe, stay hydrated and I'll see you again.